There we go. Seeing a presence of a quorum of the Community Resources Committee, I am calling this meeting of that committee to order on August 4th, 2020 at 10.05 p.m. Governor Baker's March 12th, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, MGL chapter, MGL chapter 30A section 20, allows us to hold this virtual meeting of the Community Resources Committee. This meeting is being recorded for future broadcast and all votes if taken will be by roll call. Uh, at this time, I'll call upon each of the committee members by name to make sure that we can hear you and you can hear us. Um, and then please mute your mic afterward. Uh, Shalini Balmilm. Yes. Mandy Jo Haneke is here. Evan Ross. Yes. Steve Schreiber. Yes. And Sarah Swartz will be absent today. Um, with that, before we go on to the very first item on our agenda, um, I want to bring up to the committee the option of um, removing the comprehensive housing policy from this agenda item for discussion given, uh, I think after our meeting last night, we might all be a little bit um, not up for such an important discussion at this time um, in terms of exhaustion and presence. So that I just wanted to mention, um, we could take that decision now by some sort of consensus, whether people want to discuss it today or not, or we could wait until after we finish the planning board appointment section and then make a decision then that's up to the committee. But I wanted to bring that up as an option. Um, for us. Um, any thoughts before we move on to action items? I'd second that, Shalini. Sorry, I was supposed to raise my hand. Hand. <laughs> <laughs> Shalini. <laughs> Thank you for calling my name. Uh, yes, I would, uh, I would second that. I think I would appreciate a little more time to, given the late night and then work in between, I would prefer if we could postpone it. Thank you. I see a nod from Evan. Uh, Steve, do you have any issues with that? No. Nope. So we will we will remove the comprehensive housing policy from this agenda and move it on to I believe it will fit easily onto our next meeting agenda on the 18th. Um, so so we will do that, and that leaves us. We have no action items, um, and that is because while our presentation, discussion items, planning board appointments, interview questions is what we will move to. Uh, I do not intend for us to finalize these questions based on the procedure we have adopted because we will receive the statements of interest from candidates on Monday, August 17th. We have a meeting on Tuesday, August 18th, and one of our processes for interview questions is to, if possible, utilize the statements of interest as a possibility to determine what questions there are. So I hope today to get to a sort of list of what we might include and then given when we see statements of interest filed, what we may be able to remove um, based on what we got or what we might want to add if we've still got questions after reading them. But I want to be able to go into that meeting with essentially a list that's already been discussed um, at that time. So we had, as you saw the emails, um, I put out a call for questions. I received a response from two counselors um, that that don't include committee members. So the questions I might want to add are not in there. The questions you guys might want to add are not in there. Um, it was just those that aren't on the CRC. Um, those were posted, I believe, this morning um, in the packet. Um, and so we have those two. And I also posted the questions that were used, at least from what I could tell, the last time we had a planning board opening. Evan can correct me on that if I pulled the wrong set of questions, but I tried to. Um, so I, I'm i not sure where we want to start with questions. Um, Shalini has her hand up. I think I would suggest starting with the original questions from the last planning board meeting and then discussing those from the counselors and from CRC members. Um, but if anyone has any other suggestions, I'm open to them. Shalini. I think what I'm going to say is not relevant anymore, but there were a couple of attendees and I was wondering if they were here for the housing policy and if you wanted to give them a chance to speak today even though we're not discussing it but looks like everyone's left no. looks like everyone's left i'm not sure i can go back to see who they were i know john was intending to come for that 
Um, I think I saw t- I did recognize Arthur Keen, Janet McGovern, and Dorothy still here, and one other person with K. The name was with K. Okay. Anyone so there's a person in with K who might be interested <laughs> in housing policy. Housing policy. Yeah. Um, so anyway, okay. But thank you for that. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. So we yeah. will have public comment after the interview questions if there's any public. Okay. Okay, so any other questions? Seeing none, I think what I'm going to do is put the original, the last round of planning board interviews questions up on the screen so that we can see them and discuss them. Um, And that is this one. I think everyone can see them now. Yep, okay. So this is the set from what I could find that was adopted on January 8th of this year for the last opening that we had. Um, My plan is to kind of just go through each of them uh, and discuss them, wording whether we want it or not, and then move on, unless anyone's got something different um, or a better suggestion. So we'll start with number one, which that question was, why are you interested in serving on the planning board? Thoughts on it? Evan has a thumbs up. Shalini or Steve? Steve's a thumbs up. Shalini's a thumbs up. Uh, My only thought would be this one might be one that we mark for reconsideration after seeing the statements of interest, depending on how well that's covered there. Um, But that's, again, I, I don't intend to remove it now. I'm not arguing for it. I think we should just revisit it when we've been able to see the statements of interest that are submitted. Um, What is your relevant, so we'll leave it there, we won't change it. What is your relevant expertise or experience is the next one. I'm not seeing any thoughts. I think my thoughts are the same. We might not need this one or we might need to rejigger it depending on what the statements of interest provide. Thoughts? Shalini. I think leaving it is a good idea because sometimes people, some people disclose more, some disclose less, but when they speak about it, it might give them a chance to say, looking at other people when they said, oh, I have this also, which I forgot to put in the written statement. Okay, that's a good point. Any others on that one? Seeing none, the next one is, what important perspective do you feel you bring to this body? I am seeing some nods of yes on this one. Seems awfully close to two and four. So how would I answer two and three differently? Hmm. I'm not sure that I would answer them differently. Evan. I'm sorry. No, no, Steve, I thought you were done. That's why I went to Evan. Yeah, no. <laughs> I know, I just, I forgot to raise my hand, sorry. Anyway, um, so if I had, uh, thought of this in advance. You, so you did grab the, this is the um, planning board questions that were last used for the planning board. If I had thought in advance, I would have also sent you the ZBA questions. Um, to some extent, the questions we designed for the ZBA were based on our experience doing these questions. Ah, okay. um, bring that up only because um, for the ZBA, we actually only asked, why are you interested in serving? And the reason was that we, we got kind of similar answers to one, two, and three, right? So someone's, why someone is interested in serving is often either because they think they bring an important perspective or they think they bring relevant expertise. And so I think all three of these are good questions. Mm -hmm. I would question whether we need all three or Mm -hmm. whether we want to just use one or two of them or combine i mean like question two could be um what is your relevant expertise experience or perspective or something like that um because the other you know expertise if someone's applying because they're just a lay person who's interested in the planning board that actually the experience they bring but it's also so i guess my question is do we feel like we need these three separate questions because as Steve said, they're all sort of similar or can we 
integrate them into one or two or just choose one or the other. Thank you for that. I'm going to try and type the ZBA questions in so that we have them. Oh wait, can I? Let's see if I can get this. So those are the ZBA questions. I hope people can see them. Um, yeah, so Shalini and then Steve. Um, Steve can go first. Did you have something? Yeah, go ahead. Oh. <laughs> In a way, I think number three is a better question than a one, two, a one, two, three. I think three is a better question because I actually think that if they don't hit two with that answer, then there's an issue. But there's also something to be said about breaking down questions into the smallest parts. So it's like working muscles individually. Um, so we could also say, if you've already answered it, don't feel obligated to answer again. Hmm. I can go next. Sure, Shalini. Unless someone wanted to respond to that. I think I, what I'm saying is sort of a response to what you're saying, Steve. So I'll go ahead. Uh, I do agree with the, that the perspective to me is the most important question here. However, as Steve was saying, I think when you break it down and like when I lead classes and I'll say, okay, what is your intention for being here? And don't go with the first answer because people have a certain idea why they're doing it. And then I'll say, okay, now, you know, go a little deeper and think, don't go with the first answer. What else? And generally they'll come around with something else. Hopefully they've already done this work before they come and speak to us. Yeah. Very often people haven't done that work. And so I think asking them in at least two different ways, a similar idea will get more and dif differences amongst the people. Any recommendations? Shalini? I think though we could potentially combine the expertise, experience, and perspective because, yeah, the why is a different question altogether yeah. in some sense. Like it's a motivation why you want to do this. And it gives us where they're coming from. Like, what is their drive for doing this? And the what is the what question? Like, what do you bring to the table? So I think you could group the what together and the why separately. So, uh, we'll do Evan. I'm trying to figure out how to reword that. So, so I was actually gonna say, I actually like what Shalini just said, which was, what do you bring to the table? And I'm wondering if instead of calling out expertise, experience, perspective or something, if it'd be useful to just say, um, what do you, uh, wordsmithing on the fly, right? But what do you feel you bring to the planning board um, that is useful or, or what do you feel like you bring to the planning board that can make it a successful body or, or something like that and then they can kind of choose from do they want to talk about qualifications do they want to talk about education do they want to talk about perspective um, instead of us saying give us your perspective give us your expertise it's well what do you think you bring of course that is also very related to number one which is why you're interested because you're interested because you think you can bring something um, although not necessarily i mean you could have I know um, I wasn't in the uh, interviews for planning board in, um, in uh, April 2019, because um, Sarah was our designee, that was a different process. But she said there were people whose, whose why was because they were dissatisfied with the planning board, right? It had nothing to do with perspective or anything like that. So um, I guess they are different. Anyways, that's just one thought. 
Shalini, you still have your hand raised? Oh. Comment or not? Oh yeah, I just wanted to bring it down. Sorry. Okay, no, that's fine. Um, so at this point, you guys are seeing the changes. I'll obviously retitle this document and all um, that we're talking about as we go. Um, if we're satisfied with sort of the, with at this point, the deletion of two, the acceptance of one and three, as it is reworded, we can move on. Um, and so it looks like maybe we'll move on for now. Again, we can think about these for another two weeks um, and come back with potential changes. We'll have one document to work off of then um, and, and be able to concentrate on that in two weeks. Um, so the next is, tell us about an experience you have had with collaborating with a group. Um, which is also one that was used down in the ZBA. It was the fourth one in ZBA. Mm -hmm. So, seems to be fairly standard. I'm not seeing any questions or hands. That's a good one. Nods. So the next is, given that the planning board is the keeper of the keeper of the master plan, uh, what do you see as the planning board's role in achieving the goals of the master plan to encourage vitality in the downtown and village centers? Evan. So. Um, Based on the experience that Oka had with the January interviews, I don't feel like this question worked. Um, I, I think it had some really good intentions, which is we wanted to hear people talk about the planning board in the context of the master plan. And so we pulled out sort of one of the goals. Um, what we got was people reading sections of the master plan to us. We got <laughs> one interviewee who criticized us for the <laughs> during the interview by saying, there are lots of goals. I don't know why you chose just this one. It just did not work as a question. So I would say delete it. That said, I do still feel there might be merit in having a question that relates in some way to the master plan. It just shouldn't be this question. Hmm. Melanie. So doesn't that tell us something about the people when they respond in that way? Like if they're criticizing us for asking that or why did we choose this and not the others? Or I think it gives us some information about the people. Um, that being said, um, I think it's a good question why just this goal and not the other goals. But but I think it's an important question somehow. Maybe not just downtown, maybe just the economic vitality or that's consistent with the master plan. Like, so it doesn't have to be just downtown, but it could be like the, what is that thing that's coming up that innovation center with Rosenberg. Could it be focused on zoning revisions maybe? You know, the master plan had, Steve can better rattle off all the chapters, but there's like a conservation mm -hmm. chapter and a land use chapter and a mm -hmm. housing chapter and this chapter and that chapter. So maybe um, instead of a goal, it could be, what do you see as the planning board's role in achieving or in revising by zoning bylaws to achieve the goals of the master plan, period. You know, not pick out one goal, but, or, you know, that was a very rough thing, but how could the planning board help achieve the goals of the master plan period? Um, and see what goals they identify maybe. Steve. Um, so, yeah, so I think the important thing is that A, they know there is a master plan and that B, <laughs> they know the planning board's role regarding the master plan, you know, and then A, B, C, that they know the master plan's role in framing discussions about zoning. So uh, to me, it's important that they know sort of that hierarchy. So I would be totally comfortable with a question that just said, what are your thoughts about the master plan? Or what's one thing you would change about the master plan? Or just something that indicates they're aware of it. But I, I, I um, just the way that this particular question has been framed and even some of the variations we're discussing seem to, in a way, seem too much leading the witness. So I, I would be much more curious as to whether or not 
they've read the master plan or, or are familiar with it. At least familiar with it. Mm -hmm. Would it be possible to do that through a what one goal or can you talk, yeah. you know, the question is like, what, what do you think the planning board can do to help achieve the goals of the master plan? Yeah, or, um, mm -hmm. yeah, something like that. Or what's a part of the master plan you think is lacking or, or I don't, yeah. I mean, we can't even come up with that. I like what you said though. Uh, Evan and then Shalini. Yeah, I liked, I liked, so Steve actually hit on the sort of one of the original purposes of the question, which was we wanted them to show that they knew we had a master plan and had at least some idea of what was in it, even if they mm -hmm. had a page of it. And so I kind of like Mandy's because it forces them um, to one, show they know the master plan, two, show that they have at least thought about some of the goals and three thought about the role of the planning board in achieving those goals. And I think to what Mandy was suggesting earlier, that could be zoning, but it could also not be right. I mean, the, you know, when they're considering special permit and site plan, all of that is related to, to master plan in some way. Um, and so I think, I think that I like sort of keeping it broad and allowing them to sort of choose the goals that they want to focus on. Tony. Agree. So what are the thoughts on the red that I just typed? Given that the planning board is the keeper of the master plan, what is one thing the planning board can do to help achieve the goals of the master plan? Steve? You're muted. Um, I, I would prefer to take out the first part and they can tell us what they know, you know, what's one thing. So in other words, I wasn't there for the last set of interviews, but if someone gives the answer, well, the planning board is the keeper of the master plan, then they would, you know, they would get points. Um, but I'm not sure we should give them that answer. Other thoughts? Melanie? Do we want to uh, just keep it general as achieve the goals of the master plan or would we want them to talk to one of the goals and that would give us an idea what they're interested in or something or no? Like economic development is something that's so lacking so I like that there was a focus on that. Um, but if we give it, keep it so general, they may just make some general statements. And we, what is the purpose of this question? One is to understand, to know if they know about the master plan. Do we have a second intention here? Like my intention was to know what their thoughts were about economic development. And are they able to think, have a vision for what, how we can, because the master plan does have these goals. And I think it was one of the persons in the past who said that there is sometimes conflicting, seemingly conflicting goals. And, and then how do we, uh, not, yeah, how do we move forward and make progress on those goals and stuff? So I would like basically for, to hear from people what their perspectives are in economic development. Evan? So, so two things which I think are kind of a response to that. So it, it was, yes, one of the interviewees noted that he felt some of the goals were conflicting, um, but also having read the master plan and whatnot, a lot of the goals are interrelated, right? And so I guess I would, I would maybe be leery about making them choose one goal because I think that so many of them are connected. And I think that um, saying goals gets them to speak to the larger vision, which I'm a little bit more interested because that's economic development and conservation and housing. My, my one issue with the current wording, which I, I like except for one piece is the one thing. And, and the reason I'm hesitant on that is it makes it sound to me as though, and maybe this is what you're trying to get at. And so I don't take it out because you might disagree with me, um, but it makes it sound as though what, when I read what is one thing I hear what is the planning 
name one thing that the planning board is not doing that you propose they do. Um, and maybe that's just my interpretation. Whereas I'd rather just hear them speak a little bit more generally about how the planning board can realize the vision of the master plan. Um, but I think the one thing is you're going to hear them. I worry that they feel like they have to come up with like a one little proposal that hasn't been done. Um, it, which isn't which I'm less interested in than a broader like what do you think on the planning board the planning board should be doing um, so that's my thought so we could do describe how the planning board can help achieve the goals of the master plan Does that address it, Evan? And would that be acceptable to others? I like that. I'm seeing nods. Yep. So we will delete the other one, put this one in, and with no further ado, we'll move on to the next question at this point, which is, are you comfortable? Oh, Evan, are you ready to speak to this question before I even asked it? <laughs> Both of these, both of these questions were were pushed by one member of OCA um, because we felt as though they were really important to get sort of a verbal yes or uh, a verbal commitment to these. They were both answered as just yes or no by the majority of people. There was some confusion around applicants about whether they had they should be giving more information than just yes or no, um, and that's why we got rid of them for. The ZBA questions because we had like two for the six we had two candidates they're just like yeah and then we had one who talked for three minutes about the importance of open meeting law and then sort of interesting after that is in talking to some counselors some people were like oh I like the ones that just said yes or no it, it showed that they could give a concise quick answer and then no one to shut up and then some counselors yeah. I didn't like that they just said yes or no. We gave them a, a platform to speak and it was just, it didn't help us. It didn't do anything. Um, so I would strike both six and my personal opinion based on what we saw is six and seven are yes or no questions and aren't worth our time. Other thoughts on those two? Completely agree. I'm sorry. <laughs> Thanks, Steve. <laughs> Completely agree. <laughs> Shalini? Shalini's nodding her head agree, so I will X them out. Um, the ZBA questions that aren't in here, I think is number three, describe a situation where you disagreed with a rule or regulation but had to apply it, follow it. Uh, I would be interested to hear from Evan whether that was a question that was successful for ZBA and also whether he believes it might be successful for planning board and their regulatory function. So um, I thought that this was a very interesting question when we asked ZBA. Um, I think that we got really unique answers from people and we got people thinking, uh, you know, previous ZBA members focused it very specifically on ZBA initiatives. Others focused it on, you know, faculty hiring committees. I think we got very unique answers. Um, so that's my first, I'm going to, I'm not going to provide you a clear answer. First answer is I think we got really interesting, unique answers. Second part of it though is I don't think I heard anything necessarily that helped me make my decision. Um, so, you know, it depends what we're really looking for um, and whether or not this um, is useful for the planning board. I, I mean, I do think it, it can be um, because the planning, uh, you know, planning board is constrained a bit by the zoning bylaw and their role. Um, I, I guess I, I'm not opposed to the question. I thought it was an interesting question. It was, uh, but I don't necessarily know that I got useful information out of it other than, oh, that's a really interesting story. Shalini. Sorry, I had a similar question, which was like, how to deal with conflicting opinions and controversial decisions. 
And I think that's a very important question that between that or this, like they're kind of alluding to the idea, how do people navigate discomfort? And I, and I think it's a very important skill to have. So Shalini would put that one on there, right? It was whatever language we come up with, as long as that's my goal with that question is to see how pe different people respond to. And I, uh, it was somewhere else we saw, I think it was in the school committee where some, I don't know why this one answer is really sticking in my head. Funny enough, that person is applying here. But anyway, um, I thought his response was really good. Uh, which was related to this idea, it kind of really stood out of how, like it, it seemed like he had been through situations and he had a really good approach to the, you know, these kind of situations, which is. So thoughts on Shalini's versus the disagreed with a rule or regulation, but had to apply or follow it or both. I mean, at this point, we don't have to get rid of any because we're not finalizing. I think, I think my, I lean towards keeping the rule of regulation in and I, I don't have an opinion on the other one yet um, for now. Um, because I know it can be really hard to set aside your own personal opinion that you hate that rule and still vote in favor of something that follows that rule. Um, and so I, I, you know, I take Evan's feedback seriously that did it really help make a decision? I don't know. Um, but if, if someone comes through and answers that question with, well, I would, I just wouldn't follow it because I don't like it. I would, you know, that would be very telling to me, you know, if they couldn't come up with an answer that says, well, I'd still try to do my best to apply it even though I hate it. Um, Evan, and then Steve. I was, Steve has his hand up before me. I'm, I'm okay. Steve. Um, yeah, so not everybody's had to apply a rule or regulation. I guess yeah. they've all had to follow it, but did you get many parenting stories when you asked that question? I'm curious. Uh, not from my memory. We got a yeah. few, given the nature of this community, uh, stories of uh, being yeah. back, but um, no parent. Um, I like the you know the idea of where the situation that you've been uncomfortable and how have you dealt with it. That's sort of a good job interview, you know, type question. I kind of like the specificity of three number three, and I like the fact that we might get stories, interesting stories, but um, whether or not they're deal, whether or not they'll change the needle on, I don't know. I don't, I don't mind number three. And number, the one that proposed by Shalini, I think that is also similarly important, but so a lot of it is just them knowing the language on how they would, because everyone's going to say that they're good at that, right? Be, or because in, you know, if they're over 21 or whatever the minimum, I don't even know if we have a minimum age, over 18, they've had to deal with this in their lives. And so everyone will have, you know, something to do with that. But I'm not sure. I don't know. I, I kind of like the specificity. If I had to choose mm -hmm. one, I would take the specificity of the one for the ZBA. Evan and then Shalini. So one, one uh, I should have mentioned this before, one of the other uh, rationales uh, that Oka had in putting uh, this question in for the ZBA is, so, I mean, I'd be hard pressed to find a situation where someone's going to come in and say, oh, I've never done that. If I don't like a rule, I just don't follow it, right? Like, it, mm -hmm. you know, people are um, smarter than that. To, <laughs> part, part of it was um, sort of, these questions get us information, but they also sort of signal to the candidates. And so if you looked at the selection guidance for the ZBA, um, under um, characteristics of an effective ZBA member um, and under the input from the chair, both featured 
understanding the judicial nature of the body. And we saw this question as sort of signaling to people like, this isn't a body for you to just come in and just implement your own opinions. There are sort of rules and it's, it's really an adjudicatory body. Um, and so this question helped think about that. And so I guess your other question, Mandy, was do you feel like this is useful for the planning board? And I do think that there's, there's, a, there's a role in there for that of, even if we're not sure if we're, it's gonna move the needle, does it signal to the candidates um, sort of our expectations of planning board members as an appointing authority. I think Shalini's question is, is really interesting. Um, one of the things that we might do is just kind of put out everything we can consider and then at some point we might find them because I'm actually thinking that Shalini's question might also be interesting to try to combine with current question four, um, collaborating with a group because it might be interesting to hear them talk about collaborating with the group when there was conflicting opinions within the group or collaborating with a group around something controversial. Um, and maybe instead of keeping those as two separate questions, there's a potential to merge them. That's a good idea. Um, Shalini's nodding, she still has her hand up. I, I like that idea of combining that. And I was just gonna say that making the conflicting opinions more specific to, as Steve was saying, you know, describe a situation where you have to deal. But I think I like that describe a situation where you have to work in a group around a conflicting or controversial decision. That's, that's perfect. So we're gonna leave them both for now. Um, it's gonna get very red soon. So <laughs> I apologize for that. Um, Let's leave them both. Let's discuss this fifth one from ZBA that's now number two or whatever. Um, sort of the concluding question. It'll end up in the middle of the list right now, but um, for now, leave this one in. The did you forget to tell us anything question. Yeah. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take this document and I am going to copy over the two questions we received from the council into this document so that we can see them on this document since this is our working document. Um, and then, Shalini, would you like me to copy the rest of your questions over too that you had sent me so we can see them? Sure, okay, so I will do that. Give me some time here. I had questions I'd come up with. Um, I haven't reviewed them in a little bit because they're what I sent well last time. Um, so some of them might already be covered here. So I'll go back later, but we've got this set and then we'll see if Evan and Steve have questions too they'd like to add for consideration. Um, the two we got from other counselors is what can the planning board do to promote growth, particularly downtown and in village centers that will enlarge our tax base consistent with the master plan. Evan. So actually, I was, uh, I put my head up a little bit earlier. Um, oh, sorry. Um, the first ZBA question, what is your understanding of the role of the ZBA? You crossed out as already in the plan. Oh. It's sorry. actually not, but we, we touched on it with the master plan. And so I, I guess I'm wondering, um, you know, we thought it was important for the ZBA to hear what people think the ZBA does. Um, I, I, I guess I'm wondering, do we feel like that's a useful question um, or do we feel like it's sort of captured in some of these other questions? It might be useful um, as we're going through to leave it in. Maybe as we think about this over the next two weeks, we'll figure out something else simply because um, I would worry if someone comes in thinking the planning board only deals with zoning bylaw revisions. Um, but we might be able to find a way to capture that in other questions so that we can shorten our question list. But for now, it might be worth leaving in from my thinking. Yeah, I mean, that's, I, I, I guess, and the reason I was thinking about it is because we've had these meetings about master, plan. well, you guys did master plan update process before I joined, but we also talked about zoning process. And a lot of that conversation was about the respective roles of the planning board in relation to the council. Um, so I guess I was just curious, if maybe that would be useful to hear them think about the role of the planning board. So. 
Back to, we'll leave it in. I had just thought it was already on the list. Um, my brain is not completely functioning today right now. Um, mm -hmm. The question, the first question from the counselor is promote growth, particularly in downtown to enlarge a tax base. Um, I think this brings us back to some other things we were talking about earlier with the other one where the goal, there was a goal picked of encouraged vitality. Um, this one's talking about relating it to funding, essentially. Uh, thoughts? Shalini likes it. I mean, we've already sort of discussed it, but you know where I stand on that one. <laughs> Steve? You know, I feel it's leading the witness a little bit. You know, giving the answer. In a particular, it's giving the answer to some of the questions above. Um, so I'd rather hear, you know, the people may in fact not agree with this. Like they might have some other. So uh, yeah, I'm not sure that I'm on board with this one. Also, I don't know the answer other than loosen up the proposed loosening up the zoning bylaw. I mean, the question is, is there more than one answer? And I don't know. Um, um, my concern, I'll take my time before Shalini yeah. goes again, yeah. um, is I, I guess it's not a concern. The thing I would do to support this question in, the reason I would support it in is I actually see the planning board as a very political appointment. Um, yep. And so opinions on things like growth um, and zoning, I think, are important to know before we do appointments. I know there are many counselors that disagree with that opinion, um, but I think this question gets to some of trying to, might help us determine whether the views of the person we're seeking to appoint align with our council goals, um, the goals that we had for policy in the manager's performance review um, and our own intentions for what we would like to see out of the planning board and out of zoning revisions. Um, but I know that might not be agreeable to a number of counselors. Shalini. Yeah, I think I was going to say something very similar. You just articulated it much more clearly than I will. But I, that's kind of what I was thinking is that the role of the planning board is to plan for our systematic growth and in the different domains of housing and, and, and you know, all of these other areas. And so anyone who's coming in with very tied to a certain perspective of trying to keep Amherst in a certain way or whatever, I think it would allow us to see that they are coming with a very rigid a priori idea of what it is. And if it's not consistent with our with the master plan or um, the role of planning board, then I think it would allow us to see that. And we need to be able to see that. Steve. Yeah, so maybe the problem I'm having here is that if you take, a, take away the part of the sentence that's between the commas, then the question becomes, what can the planning do to promote growth that will enlarge our tax? And I'm not saying do that, but yeah, but it's so great. What can they do to promote growth that will enlarge our tax base consistent with the master plan? So that's really only about money, right? It's only about, but there's many, many other reasons to promote sustainable, <laughs> or good development, I guess. And I wouldn't even call it growth because growth can mean a whole bunch of different things to different people. But to promote um, sensible development or, or whatever that will m increase the livability of, of Amherst or something like that. But it's not just about the money, it's about housing affordability, it's about the mix of people that choose to live here. It's about reducing our, our um, dependence on fossil fuels, you know, et cetera, et cetera. 
Evan. Yeah, so this is a tough one, and I, I think I'm probably falling a little bit more in line with Steve's opinion on this. Um, I guess my first thought was, how is this meaningfully different from number five, how we can help achieve the goals of the master plan? And it's that we're pulling out something specific, right? Um, and specifically talking about, and, and you know, one, and then the set, the last question on this page, the bullet, I mean, they're very similar questions. They're both about sort of uh, economic development and growth, right? Um, we're pulling out that, and I'm certainly someone who cares a whole lot about that, right? Um, but then I'm thinking in my mind, well, this question could also be, you know, Steve mentioned housing affordability, right? What can the planning board do to uh, promote housing affordability. It could also be sustainability, right? It could also be the diversity of our, the socio and racial economic diversity of our community. Like you could pull, you could actually do this question and plug in any goal. And I guess I, I'm just, I'm feeling some um, questioning around why we pull out just economic development, even though that's actually one of my priority goals. Um, and that's why, you know, Steve's sort of statement about livability or vitality, I think, covers a lot of these different. But then I guess gets sort of back to question five, right? So it's, do we want a question that's overall master plan, which is specific, and then one specific aspect of master plan? And if so, how do we justify economic development versus housing affordability versus sustainability, right? Shalini. Okay. I think I have a great question, which is going to, <laughs> which is going to take into account all of these things he said. Maybe the single question could be, what interconnection do you see between development, um, housing, uh, blah blah blah, and racial equity or something? Because they are, and that's the main point. I, problem I encounter is people are not able to see connect the dots. And the reason we're not able to have diversity in this town is because people can't afford it. And if people can't afford it is because we're just relying on the property tax and we don't have enough of that. And so if people can see all of this, I mean, at least it will allow us to get to see if people are able to connect the dots. So create some sort of a question like that. I just typed one up as you were speaking. <laughs> Nice, I like that. My thoughts were going to be, after this five of describe the planning board to help achieve the goals, we could list a couple of the goals, you know, not just economic development and say, pick one goal and what can the planning board do to promote that or, or you know, but again, it doesn't really change much from the question at number five. And then, I don't know, Evan. Right. So, so, and the difference between what you just said, Mandy, and what you wrote in response to Shalini is you put the role of the planning board in the question and she took it out. Right. Yeah. And so I guess five is all about what's the role of the planning board, but it sounds like to some extent that question that you wrote that Shalini threw out there is actually less about the operation or function of the planning board and more, we just want to hear your thoughts on development, housing, and all these things in our town, which I think gets back to what you said earlier, Mandy, about this is sort of a political appointment and we do want it, and do we want to hear people's viewpoints? I think OCA, and I'm not saying this is good or bad, I'm just giving context, OCA focused very, OCA did as much as we could to get away from the political side of this and focus very strictly on what are your skills, what are your qualifications, why, why do you think you'd be effective on this committee? um to try to but but we know it is a political appointment right um and so i guess that's my big question with what's what you just wrote and what's currently highlighted on the screen is is our is our goal to just get their perspective or viewpoint on development growth in town leaving aside the planning board altogether which is sort of captured in five what's the intent of the question Shalini. My intent is to see if people would have a, 
are able to hold these competing goals and they're actually not competing, seemingly competing, but they're actually interconnected. And if they have the capacity to see and connect the dots. And uh, I think in like, in research, we would always say there is no objectivity uh, really because everyone's coming in with a bias. And so it's, but it's better if you just put the bias out there that this is the bias we're coming in with. Um, I don't know how that's related to this, but it, it was just making me think about that because we're saying it's a political decision, but we're not going to, but we know it is a political decision. And I think more than the politics of it, I think is the ability of the person to be adaptable and not come in with very rigid. So I'm not interested in where they're coming in from as much as are they able to see the bigger vision and then adapt based on you know what the master plan vision is rather than their own individual agenda because we all have an agenda Evan so um, I, I really appreciate, Mandy, that you structured our um, schedule so that we don't have to vote on this today. Oka always did these in one meeting, um, but I'm, I think I would struggle with that um, right now. Um, and so maybe, I think this is one I might want to think about a little bit. Um, not think about whether, I think it's useful and I understand where Shalini's coming from. I, I, think we, I think we have to really think about the wording of it. Um, and again, I question, you know, again, we picked out development, housing, sustainability, racial equity. We could, again, throw, we could throw historic character in there, right? We could throw, con like, there's a million things we could throw in there. Yeah. So thinking about how we can wordsmith that, but I might just suggest that we leave it here for now, um, knowing that we can edit it on the 17th, is that 18. right? 18th. 18th. Because uh, I, think, I think I personally would benefit from just thinking about the best way to ask this question so we get what's useful for us. Um, the other thing I was just going to throw out really quick is I see in attendees John Hornick, and so I, we might want to mention uh, that we're not doing the comprehensive housing policy today. Yeah, thank you for that. I've been watching, I hadn't been watching who was in the attendees list and I miscounted apparently. Um, yes, John, we have decided to postpone that to the next meeting on the 18th. It, you're allowed to stay, John, if you wish to and you can stay for public comment which we have not done yet but we won't actually be talking about agenda item i don't know 3b or whatever it is um and all so thank you for pointing that out evan um so let it sounds like we're gonna leave it in we're gonna think about it we might come up each person's going to be tasked with potentially coming up with revisions to this list i'm getting the feeling though that this one we feel is covered sufficiently enough by number five up above to delete it from this list and potentially this other question to delete it from the list is is that what i'm seeing i think so so i'm going to delete that one from the list the next question we received from counselors was, do you offer a perspective that is otherwise not adequately represented on the planning board? And if so, please explain. I see a head shaking for Evan. I'm trying to, I don't want to make it too small. Um, we're obviously out of some room here. Oh, here, maybe I can do this. No markup. There. <laughs> now we can see. <laughs> <laughs> some of what we've gone with. So we are on this one here. Um, I'm trying to figure out whether it might be adequately covered somewhere else. Steve and then Shalini. Yeah, so I'm uncomfortable with this one for a number of reasons. And like we are interviewing everyone, including incumbents. So like, let's say that they are also a baker and we have two other bakers that are being considered. So, yeah, I, I don't know. I'm a little uncomfortable with the way that this one's framed. And I think it's actually asked somewhere else a little bit earlier. Shalini. 
Yeah, I was thinking that this question is a combination of that perspective that you bring question. And then I later on had that one about, what is it? Uh, you know, okay. So I do feel that we need more diversity of perspective. Like I learned that in our district meeting, that was one of the takeaways for me is that when we're making policies, it's affecting people. And when we don't have that representation in council, there's no way for us to even think through how it's affecting people because we just don't have that perspective. And which is why I think it's important to really go out of our way to try and get people who are generally underrepresented in these committees and town council and so forth. So there's some way to ask that, bring that question and highlight that. Evan. Yeah, so um, I, I personally think that this question is adequately covered in what do you feel you bring to the planning board that can make it mm. successful. Um, and if they don't mention it there, they can also mention it in what's kind of labeled as question three, five. Uh, what else would you like us to know? I don't think we need to ask this directly because I think that it's a, if someone feels that perspective is important, that's what they're going to talk about in either why are you interested mm. or what do you feel you bring or what else do you think we should know in making our decisions. That's true. Um, okay. To Shalini's point, I, I agree 100% about um, getting people who are underrepresented. I think unless things have changed since I last looked, our pool is 100% white. <laughs> almost exclusively male and <laughs> homeowner. And so I don't think we're going to get a question. I don't think we're going to get an answer from anyone that represents bringing underrepresented uh, demographics onto the planning board from our current pool. Um, <laughs> I, I think what we'll get is what we see. I'll try and be careful on how I say this because we're being recorded. What we see a lot in this town, which is um, privileged white homeowners talking about how they bring diversity, um, which mm -hmm. always makes So it sounds like we're gonna delete this question okay. as fully covered. Um, this next one, which was one of Shalini's. Mm -hmm. um, Shalini? Yeah, I guess um, this is something that the appointing people have to look into. I guess the person who's underrepresented doesn't have to say I'm underrepresented. We should be able to. So, okay. Delete. That's kind of my thoughts. So I'm going to mm -hmm. delete this one. Yeah. Um, the next one you had was what role can you play in the planning board to promote economic development? That's yeah, we already have that covered. I think we've already covered that one. or yeah. are working on covering it and struggling through how. Mm. Uh, I'm going to delete that one. Okay, Shalini? Mm. Yeah. And the next one is uh, walk us through the process you'll use for making decisions in the planning board. Um, I can provide the thinking behind that. Yeah, was, yeah, what I was thinking is that people sometimes come in with very confident, we should do this or we should do that. And then I'm always curious, what was the process uh, for coming to that conclusion? And the reason also is multifaceted because I generally tend to doubt everything that I'm saying and offering and feel so underconfident. And even though I've done research on the topic, I've spoken to people, but I'm still like, maybe we should try this. And then I, on the other hand, I'll hear people who have not spoken to anybody, has no personal experience, or will be so confident in share, saying what they are proposing. So I was just wondering if it would be helpful to get a sense of, you know, I mean, because it like, what is the process that people are using? We are not trained urban designers or what or policy makers or whatnot, we're just random people. And what is the process we're gonna be using? Like. Uh, are these people going to go out and talk to people? Are they going to do research? Are they going to dig into their own personal experience? So I think it would be helpful to see what 
And I don't know how to ask that question, but that's what I was thinking. Thank you for that explanation, Shalini. Evan. <laughs> This is a really interesting question, and it kind of makes me think about <laughs> discussions about our process of like, well, what do we, which uh, you all on, on the OG CRC talked about extensively, and we're starting to implement, right, of what do we consider when we're making a decision? My own, if we're going to do this question, and, and again, I think this is another one that I might have to think about, but I think it's an interesting question. And my only thing I would say is I'd want to maybe try to constrict it to, um, maybe zoning amendments or something. I'm a little worried about saying like, what's your process on making a decision? Who would you talk to? What would you research for us an SPR, right? Or it, I, I worry about it seeming to conflict with um, our questions about like disagreeing with a rule or regulation. Um, so I guess where there's opportunity to do a whole lot of research, creative research, outreach, talking to people is in coming up with um, zoning proposals or, you know, in a decade, the master plan, the new master plan. But I, I, I don't want necessarily to think, I, I'm, I'm just not sure that it easily transfers over to special permits and site plan review. And I think what you're talking about, Shalini, I, um, you know, makes sense for master plan and zoning, but I'm not sure it makes sense for things that are sort of constructed by our bylaws about the process that they have to follow. Does that make sense? I'd love to hear from Steve on this. Yeah. I, I'm gonna, before Steve, I'm going to put up two questions I had um, drafted for myself um, that kind of relate to what Evan just said, which is why I wanna throw them up there. Um, they don't completely relate, but they're kind of there. Uh, and then Steve. Yeah. Um, so in a way, if we were interviewing a Supreme Court nominee, the question would, we'd be trying to figure out whether or not this candidate is a originalist or a, um, well, I don't know what the other term is. So do they have a very strict reading of the zoning bylaw and, you know, the town bylaws or do they see it as a more flexible, organic document? And I, I think that that's a very real, that's a very real um, issue that actually does have some relationship to everything above, particularly the, yeah, maybe I should leave it at that. But I, I do think it's an important question. But for me, that would be, And actually, I think it's probably most relevant for this because the zoning bylaw is such a, you know, such a lengthy and deliberative process that goes to the planning board that no individual ever really has fingerprints on a particular zoning bylaw that, you know, makes it to us. But the really immediate one are the SPRs, you know, the kind of the boots on the ground decisions that the planning board is solely responsible for. But I, I would actually really love to know what their opinion is, or how much, is there a right amount of flexibility in the zoning by law, or should it be stricter, or, because there, there is, as we all know, quite a bit of flexibility that unless, you know, through this waiver process or through the special permit process. Yeah, so. Uh, Throwing it out there, it's a horribly worded question, so don't worry about what I'm typing. Um, just to yeah. kind of get that that thinking on the page. Yeah. What is the opposite of originalist? Like, um, well, there's a constructionist. Constructionist. Well, Are you an originalist or constructionist? Let's just ask that. I'm not sure that's the interpret. See, I can't even spell the word interpreted. Um, so I, I don't know, you know, there's strict construction, which is letter of the law yeah. as originally meant or, you know, and then there's, I'd, I'd have to come up with the right term. Yeah, yeah. Well, you guys know what I'm talking about. Yeah. So other thoughts on Shalini's question. It sounds like it might be useful, but we're not sure the wording is correct at this point. Um, and then thoughts on what Steve just said, and then I'd like thoughts on the two I put up there are kind of the same thing. Um, but I, I am curious, given how we've had to work with 
the planning board, um, especially as it relates to zoning bylaw revisions and potentially master plan revisions, what people think about that. So hence, that's why I had that question there. Shalini. I have a just general question with how long are these interviews? <laughs> <laughs> um, so, I, yeah, um, I think that's one thing we have to consider next time as we go through these questions. Okay. Okay. How many of them we actually really do need to ask and what the time limits are on responses. Okay. We'll know at that point how many candidates we actually have. Um, mm. You know, the, the pool has potentially grown since our last meeting. Um, mm. So, you know, I, I, I'm, I can't, obviously we don't talk about numbers, but it has potentially grown. Okay. Um, Thank you. So, Evan. So I think um, looking at the, the one, two that Mandy put on the screen and then um, the one that, that Steve said, I, I guess my, my initial thought is how much knowledge do we expect them to come to the planning board with, right? And so we talked, when we were talking about um, what's now question five up top, we had talked about, we want them to know uh, that we have a master plan and generally what's in it. Do we want them to have read the master plan in its entirety? I, you know, that I don't know, right? But we, we said we at least want them to know we have one and what its main goals are. We want them to know the top lines, right? And so when I'm looking at these questions, I guess I'm just wondering, what's our expectation for the knowledge they come in with? And that's, so for number one, I think that's a really important question because we've been talking about this well, you all were talking about this before Shalini and I joined, and, and then we've still been talking about it. I worry a little bit about someone who has to sort of, before the, who maybe hasn't been paying attention, um, but is interested and has something to offer, feeling like they have to learn about what the CRC is and, and come up. It, I, I worry that's asking a lot, but maybe it's not. And the same thing with um, the question about flexibility and the zoning bylaw. We could, that's actually a pretty I think that's a, a technical, a pretty technical question. And so um, I'm not, I, I think I would be a decent member of the planning board, I hope, but I would think I would struggle even based on what I know right now to answer that question. Um, because I think it, it requires them maybe to have read the zoning bylaw. And so we could argue that, yeah, we want someone who is applying for the planning board to have read the zoning bylaw, or we could say, look, that's an unreasonable expectation. And so, I, I feel like I'm hinting at my opinion here, but I, I am going I guess I'm curious with these is what do we expect people to know before they even interview? And is it reasonable to expect them to understand what the CRC is and what the dynamic is and, ha and, and have a firm enough understanding of the zoning by a law that they could answer question about flexibility and interpretation before they even get to an interview? So I'll answer it with my, the question I came up with. Um, I, you know, we, you know, Steve knows we have struggled with what our role as a community resource committee is as it relates to master plan. This one is more on zoning, but um, zoning revisions, where do they start? Where do they end? Who gets it when? Who talks to who? And all of that. Um, but throughout all of it, we've determined that there needs to be some sort of relationship. Um, and we're struggling with potentially what that is. Um, but I, I guess what I'm trying to get at is to, to make sure individuals that are applying for the position understand there needs to be one um, and sort of accept that and, and maybe have ideas of how that could work. Um, because, you know, we've struggled with how it would work. Um, I would be concerned with 
someone that comes in and says, we don't have to talk to CRC or the council at all as it relates to zoning bylaw revisions, we can do our own thing. Like that would totally concern me because we're the ones that has to pass the bylaw revisions um, as council, you know, and if, if someone doesn't understand that, um, you know, or or has a negative attitude towards that, I I think I'd be concerned. Um, so it might not be worded well. There's probably a better way to word that. But that's trying sort of trying to get at what I'm at is trying to get towards a collaborative process so that the planning board doesn't waste their time on zoning bylaw revisions that have no chance at the council. Um, you know, things like that. That that it's not siloed. That there is collaboration there. Um, it probably can be worded better. But Shalini. Yeah, I would agree that people need to know that. No, I wouldn't agree about that. But I think they, we, we do need to work together and that's such a great need. But where would they find out about, because we're still figuring it out ourselves, right. what that relationship, so where would they go and even find that relationship and learn about it? Yeah. You make a good point. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. And I am totally open to ways to figure out how to ask the question without requiring stuff like that. Mm. Mm. <laughs> I'm just going to do some reformatting here while we think. Are people okay? I think after describing all of that, I'm okay with getting rid of the role do I do we see the planning board having in zoning bylaw revisions? So I'm going to delete it since it was my suggestion, unless people really feel it needs to be in there. Mm. So we're dealing with those three. If we're not sure what to do now and we're thinking about them we could leave them on here for the next two weeks continue thinking with people bringing revisions to me and i would incorporate them all into the same document for preparation for the next meeting instead of sitting here in silence <laughs> Uh, Evan. Yeah, maybe that's a good option. I, I'm, I'm really struggling with this question because I think that you're right that we need people to understand there's a relationship between the council and the planning board. I just, I'm just not, I'm not sure how, to, if you're not on, already on the council or the planning board, I just don't know how you answer that question. Um, you know, like I, I think that that requires a level of understanding of these bodies that might be above what we can reasonably expect for an applicant. Because in some, in some way, I mean, you're asking them to talk about or develop process, which we know how hard <laughs> process is because we're like almost on year two and we're still getting bogged down in process all the time. So, yeah, I guess that's 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 where, where I'm really struggling with this is if the relate if it's about the relationship between the planning board and the CRC or the council, I don't know how you reasonably answer that question without having some experience serving on it either. And and because of that, I worry that it's a question that might favor someone seeking reappointment over someone who is applying new to the body. 
uh, well, plus one to what Evan just said, but also vice versa. So someone who's on the planning board might have a really nuanced opinion about exactly how these should work. And that nuance may be in conflict with what we think. And then somebody brand new might present a sort of completely different perspective that's untested. Um, so we have way too many questions, you know, so I think that Can't this would probably be one that I would jettison. And I know that we're going to edit at, at a later. Right. Are you, you renumbering? Or? I'm trying to, it's not letting me. Oh yeah. That's not the option. <laughs> um, we programmed your computer to only allow four questions. Yeah. But anyway, there's 12 questions there. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, times 15 applicants or whatever equals. There we go. How'd you do that? <laughs> I switched lists and then switched back. I have no idea why that worked. <laughs> Word can be a mystery sometimes. <laughs> But so I, I think at this point, we've got a list of 12. We know it's too many. Um, there's potential for, I think it was um, one of these combining into another one. I'm not even sure which one it was now. Um, Might have been the conflicting opinions, controversial decisions along with a disagreed rule regulation, I think, might have been the two. No, it was. Uh, it was my suggestion, and it was um, five and three. Ah. So contextualizing collaboration with a group in the context of a situation in which it was controversial, or where with the group had conflicting opinions. So I'm. I'm going to move that in just to give us an idea okay. of that. Um, Yep. And then the rule or regulation you have to apply and follow it is kind of the same as sort of these two. I'm just going to move them in just to relate. They're kind of related. Um, how do you apply stuff? Um, but it sounds like we're kind of to the point where we've got an outline. We're not finalized. We didn't intend to finalize today. Um, we have some thinking to do. The question I have, so I, I'm okay with us, as if everyone else is, of sort of laying it down for now and coming back to it in two weeks. The question I have is, I received responses from two counselors on requests for questions since they are not finalized. I was thinking of going back out and asking again. Um, and I was thinking of somehow including this list in that set, in that email um, with however raw it is right now. Um, and I would like thoughts on that um, because it might help us to get feedback on these questions in two weeks. It, given the way they are now though, some of them are not, I'm not sure some of them are ready to go out to the full council for feedback, which is my concern with sending them out, Evan. So not to sound, um, well, you sent out an email soliciting questions. You sent out a reminder email. This is the third time the council has been asked to do this. They did it once for planning board in January, once for ZBA in April. If they didn't get you questions by the deadline, they didn't submit questions. I, we, I'm worried we have so many. <laughs> I'm, I'm worried about either getting more or getting emails from counselors giving their opinion conflicting opinions on different questions um i don't so i i don't think we should send it back out the one thing i i would ask and i ask is an understatement strongly urge is that as soon as possible this be sent to sarah um and if she is not going to be at the meeting on the 18th um if we could at least get her thoughts on this because she had she one always provides very valuable information and two also has the experience of having done this before so i'm much less interested in get in in giving uh the full council a second chance as i am in making sure we get input from our fifth committee member 
That is a very good idea. Um, Shalini. Yeah, completely agree. I was going to share. I completely agree. And I don't think you should increase your workload unnecessarily because you've already done that one. So. Okay, so I will not send it out to all the other counselors. If they ask, I will, if a counselor asks, I will send it to them though, um, as a courtesy if someone actually comes back and asks. Um, and, and I'm thinking particularly of the two members that actually sent me questions and knew we were discussing it today. They may ask what the result of that was um, and I will let them know. Um, okay, so I'm gonna stop this share for now so I can see other people a little better. Um, so I think that brings us to, we are not doing comprehensive housing policy today, postponed. Um, general public comment. Um, so if there is public comment, people may speak on the matter. Within the jurisdiction of CRC, you're welcome to express your views for one to three minutes. Um, and so we have a member of the public, uh, happens to also be a counselor, but I have to offer public comment. So if anyone, including the member of the public that's there, wishes to make a comment at this time, raise your hand and we will recognize you. Dorothy is remaining quite quiet right now. So I am going to assume she does not want to make a public comment. Oh, there we go. <laughs> so I am going to, Dorothy, I'm gonna allow you to talk. Um, Uh, you're going to actually get promoted to panelist to do so because of the version of Zoom you're using. Um, so patience as you come in, Dorothy. And once you're in, you should be able to, I think, hold on. I think you can change your, you can control your own mic, Dorothy. We can't hear you though. I'm not sure there's a mic connected. So Dorothy, we don't, you don't have a mic connected to your computer. Cause I'm not showing any mic. Do you, I, I think that is meaning you don't want to talk? Okay. <laughs> um, so hard to figure these things out. Um, so we're going to change her back to attendee um, as we figure it all out. Um, given that, um, that moves us on to minutes. Um, the planning board will be addressing those two outstanding sets of minutes, June 3rd and June 17th, tomorrow night. So we will address them at our next meeting. We will finally have copies of them to be able to address and pass, but I want them to pass them before we see them since we were joining their meetings essentially. Um, and then the July 21st minutes I got today, so they will be in next week's packet. Um, given that, I don't think I have any other announcements. Next agenda is going to be a continuation of these questions. We will settle on them. Um, we will have a final pool of candidates at that point because our statement of interest deadline is the 17th and our meeting is the 18th. Um, so look for, I know it's a quick turnaround. Those statements of interest are due at close of business Monday the 17th. Our meeting is 2 p.m. Wednesday, the Tuesday the 18th. It is a quick turnaround. I will get them up as soon as I can I was not, ex at, we'll have a council meeting that I'm trying to read <laughs> and manage our evaluations at 5.30 starting, but maybe I'll find some time. It's gonna be a busy night. Um, I will get them up on SharePoint and out to Athena. She already knows that they're gonna need posted as soon as possible. Um, so I will probably um, make sure they're posted before they go out to you or send you, copy you guys on the email to Athena to post um, so that we can get those statements of interest and know the pool for the meeting on the 18th. Um, and then it'll also go up on an agenda and all of that. Um, the agenda will also include housing policy that we postponed. Um, and we had said our two to four o'clock meetings on Tuesdays would run through the summer and then we would revisit it. I do not know whether two of us will know our school schedules well enough 
in two weeks to actually be able to no i'm talking about me and sarah <laughs> with our kids sorry Evan. Okay, so mine have been set for like two years <laughs> oh my god no sarah and i i'm not sure we know uh, what the schools are they're doing are, oh. are doing where they're going so i i'm gonna try and put it on the agenda but i have no idea whether we'll be able to um actually deal with that there is one thing september 15th we shouldn't change the time of that is a two to four o'clock meeting um, it is when we have, I have confirmed with Dave Zomek that Chris Brestrup and Rob Mora will be ready to present on zoning bylaw priorities at that time. I have uh, to get off. I'm sorry. Oh, that's okay. We're almost done. So uh, <laughs> just going through the agenda items. Okay. Um, yeah. So that meeting will have to stay the same in the same time simply because we've confirmed it. Um, but, but we'll see when we can get the rest um yeah and that's it right now that i have for next agendas and plans um if anyone's got any suggestions i think it'll still be a full agenda in two weeks uh, to get through these questions and try and talk about housing to start the talk about housing um so any other thoughts questions announcements seeing none we are going to adjourn at 3 31 p.m yay thank you thank you all bye Sleep. I know I need to. Yes, 